Good morning and welcome. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed is his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open and all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people Lord God, the heavenly King, Almighty God the Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, most of the love Father, Lord God, the Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Lord. Have mercy on us. We are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. We will love you with the Holy One. We will love you with the Holy One. We will love you with the Most High. Jesus Christ, our Christ, and our Holy Spirit, and the glory of God our Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O oh God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's Word. Morning's readings in the psalm are all found in the insert. The Old Testament lesson this morning comes from the fourth chapter of the book of Isaiah, beginning at the 21st verse. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them to a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he has strong power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no money, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Oh, the psalm I point out for this morning is Psalm 147. Verses 1 to 12 and 21. Let us sit, pray the psalm together. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exile of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them by their name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God with fond of heart. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He 
provides food for flocks and herds, and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by his length of course. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. The Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who willingly grant his favor. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle lesson this morning comes from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. It begins the 16th verse of the ninth chapter. For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my preaching I may make the gospel free of charge, not making full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all, that I might win the more. The Jews who became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not myself being under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being without the law toward God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some, I do all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessing. The word of the Lord. Thank you, thank you, God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus left the synagogue. They entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. But he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. It's good to see so many of you here this morning on this so snowy Super Bowl Sunday. Lent begins here in about 10 days. For me, it seems hard to believe that Lent is here again. It doesn't feel like a year has passed, or maybe it feels like two years have passed. It really depends on the day of the week you talk to me. I know others have felt like Lent never ended, that this was the year without an Easter, because they weren't able to gather together on Easter Sunday and have that normal celebration with the community. A year with what felt like daily updates about what was going wrong with our country and about how sick everyone was. A year that's left some people feeling like they're in a perpetual fog. And others feeling very alone. As I call and as I talk to people from our community, I sometimes talk to people that have been pretty, pretty isolated for the last year. It's enough to give you a headache when you stop and think about it. 
Now, I've also heard some people accuse the Apostle Paul of giving you a headache when you try to read him. He can be hard to understand in the Greek, and even harder to understand sometimes in English. And those first three verses of our reading in Corinthians are one of those passages. He seems to circle around himself several times, right? If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe betide me if I do not proclaim the gospel. Paul has an obligation laid on him because of his encounter with Christ. Before that, he was fully under the law. In his own words, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, someone who looked at the law and took it and then ran with it. To not sin accidentally, you would build a box around those sins. If we don't want to work on the Sabbath, you start by going, well, walking or traveling is work. So what's a reasonable distance that we can travel on the Sabbath and get to synagogue and it not be counted as work? Because the Sabbath day is holy, we want to honor it. We want to honor what God told us in the Old Testament, right? So great, that, that's a first box. And then they build a second box, because maybe they felt like the distance I had to travel to the synagogue I liked was too far, but there was a closer one. Maybe that's a better distance, a shorter distance. You know, if you want to help your neighbor who has something to do on the Sabbath, you wait until the next day. Unless there are animals in mortal danger, in that case, it's okay to break the Sabbath a little bit to protect that animal. I've sometimes heard the term legalistic used about Paul's pre-Christian life. One where avoiding sin was the paramount thing he could do. And I think it might be an apt description. But then he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And he spent three years, he says in Galatians, in the desert, learning. And he became a great proponent of grace. That transformation leaves him, he says, like an apostle born out of time. But his calling left him obligated to preach. It was his responsibility. It was what he was called to do. He also implies that judgment would be on him if he didn't. Woe betide me if I do not proclaim the gospel. Woe here means great grief. Think about it in terms of the Gospels, when Jesus is like, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto those who don't prepare. Or the woes we hear in the book of Revelation that John wrote. But he's been given a commission to preach, and that's what he must do. He must make himself observant to the law when needed, or being weak around those who, who are weak. Probably here he's talking about Gentiles. Paul preaches to everyone, everywhere, in whatever language is best to reach them. But Paul's not totally up from under the law. He's still under Christ's law. This is not an excuse to do whatever he wants. And he wants to make sure he spells it out here, because as we've talked about the last several weeks, the Corinthians have taken that freedom they found in Christ and have ran with it as far as they can. You know, kind of, kind of like what happens when your, college, when your kids get away and live on their own for the first time. You've told them all their life, don't do these crazy things, and then they do those crazy things, and then after a few weeks or a few months or maybe a few years, they come back and say, maybe I should have done those crazy things. But he has to talk about Jesus wherever he goes. In Isaiah this morning, it starts off, have you not known, have you not heard, has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? He reminds us that God sits above it all. And he brings down even the rulers, the princes of the world. Who can we compare to God? Who is his equal? As I was reading this week, I was reminded of God's answers to Job. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Remember, God laid out to Job in a series of questions like, where were you when the foundations of the earth were laid? And can you lift up your voice to the clouds that the flood of waters may cover you? And he goes on for 41 verses, asking Job questions about Job's power and Job's understanding and Job's qualifications, and very suddenly reminding Job of God's. We cannot fully understand God. Sometimes that frustrates us. But while God has no equal, that does not mean that God sits above it all and treats us poorly. No. Isaiah reminds us this morning that unlike us, 
God does not grow weary. When we are tired, when it feels like we cannot go on, God will strengthen us. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. He reinforces us when we do not have the power in ourselves to go on. His love endures forever. The psalmist agrees and tells us that God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. The God who counted the stars, who gave each one a name, the God who provides for every living thing on earth, that same God has given everything for us. He is love, and he loves us. That's why Paul has to preach. We see that love poured out in our gospel reading this morning. Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law, and then brought healing and freedom to many that were in that town. The time had not yet come for him to be fully known to the whole world, so he prayed. He stayed focused on the work that God sent him to do. He continued from there to go out from town to town, proclaiming the kingdom of God and bringing freedom to those who heard him. When God changes us, it should be evident to those around us. When God heals us, when he heals us physically, when he heals us emotionally, when he heals us spiritually, we need to let those around us know. Jesus died for everyone. God's mercy is available to all who ask and is new every morning. When opportunity arises, tell people what Jesus has done for you. Invite them to church. Support ministries that reach out to people. Now some of us, like Paul, are, proclaim, are, are, are compelled to proclaim it everywhere we go. Some of us, like the psalmist, should sing about it. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the heart. Whatever your gift is this morning, use it for the Lord. Use it to reach out to the community. And when you feel like you can no longer go on, wait upon the Lord. Let us stand and share our sacred story in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all who have seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from God. Our 
We pray for Joe, our president, and Thomas, our governor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Thy family be justice and peace on earth. The just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. We pray for your compassion on Cecil Dean, John McCoy, Mark Sarienko, Carl Hoyt, and Brandon Newper, Jill Downey, and Rob Young, and all who are in danger, sorrow, illness, or any kind of trouble. For those who are in the sick of the sick, and the righteous, and the needy. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael Walker, the Bishop, Daniel, our Bishop, Jeremiah, our Deacon in Charge, Linda, our visiting priest, Sadak, Bishop of Tanganyika, Elias, Bishop of Tabor, Tanzania, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this earth. We thank you for how you have led us to share your vision for our parish, to carry your word to our community. Empower and equip us to be a Holy Spirit in this home. We give you thanks and bless the memory of all the faithful departed. We praise you for your saints who have entered into your joy. May you also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. And let us pray now for our own needs and the needs of others, either silently or aloud. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess the peace and the history of God, word, and beauty. Of the Lord, we are done. Of the Lord, we are not done. We have not loved our neighbor in the service of us. We are not loved our neighbor in the service of us. We are not loved our neighbor in the service of us. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us now offer to God all that we are, all that we have, and all that we long to become.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of heaven and earth, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is in the eyes. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to separate suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us, and we give us the time to the temptation, and we will bless us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Very gracious. God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us and the need of our own. Oh, sorry. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for giving us the spirit of your Son, of the most precious Son of God, of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for our share of the new covenant of faithfulness, and for the of the living members of the body of your Son, and the heirs of your own. And now, our Father, to set the sacrament of your Lord and your Lord, to love and serve you in faithfulness and spirit of our Lord. And in you, and you will be the Lord of the King, and I am your Lord, and I am your Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones and keep you safe this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank and thanks be to God. God.